please go on. This one? Okay, now it works. <laughs> Um, actually, I've been working with the civil servant of the European Commission for uh, the last seven years. And um, in fact, she has been working on the issue of children's rights and trafficking of children, it's, which is a, an inter-country adoption with a highly politicized issue. And um, she has been parked by the European Commission in an NGO being paid by the European Commission to come back after seven years or something to see whether the political landscape has changed. It hasn't changed and um, her life is actually being destroyed in a very subtle manner uh, from intimidations to uh, phone problems to um, uh, yeah, bank cards not working and all this kind of stuff. And um, there is no way to turn to it. It's a civil servant who has been ordered by the Commission now. She is an absolute expert on trafficking and uh, children's rights. And she's supposed to uh, sit in an office uh, and doing accounting where she's not being given any work. So I don't really, and we, we I don't know where to turn to where, because the highest level of the European. This one? Yeah, again. Uh, the highest level of the European Commission has been in, uh, involved in this. So um, th there is absolutely no mechanism um, where to turn to because um, the medical service gets involved. Um, I, I don't know. I, I, really, I really don't know anymore um, where to turn to for, for civil servants of the European Commission and how to deal with this institution. Yes. The micro. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for this uh, remark. Uh, I think it's a very important issue, and we have similar experiences all over Europe, not only on the European level, but also in some member states. And there will be some, some testimonies and experiences from different member states, including Hungary, how it goes in, in the member states. Of course, uh, these are techniques which are very difficult to uh, push, uh, put to the, to, to the table because they are not direct um, violation of, of law uh, in several cases. Um, and I think that uh, the existing regulation doesn't help us really to, uh, to fight against those practices, both uh, on the European level and uh, in, in the member states. But perhaps Anna Gomes, uh, who is a bit more experienced in uh, that issue, if you can uh, give some, some proposals or ideas how to deal with, with such a problem. Well, I think we have the chance to have still the possibility really to ask questions to Assange or Sarah Harrison. And maybe we should that, do that first before, before yeah, we take yeah, yeah. The, the great story. So the question is, before we say thank you to our guests, is there anybody in the room who want to ask a question to Sarah Harrison and Julian Assange? And yes. Well, that was not for Julian Assange, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, if if uh, uh, Julian Assange or Sarah Harrison is going to react on your question, of course they, they will do it. Uh, perhaps it's not directly their specific um, uh, area, but they can react. We still have one question, and um, then we please? will give yeah. the floor to uh, Julian and Sarah. Please. It was difficult for me to hear your question precisely, but I believe it was to do with people finding employment after they've blown the whistle. Is that correct? Yes. Yes? yes. Um, if, no? No, no, yeah, it, it was like that, yes. Okay. Um, it's, it is something that I've thought about. You can see it in a number of cases. Um, Again, sorry, but it's a good one to take a U.S. example. Thomas Drake, um, who blew the whistle, uh, pre Snowden was an NSA whistleblower, um, and he has had he had that uh, difficulty for a long time. I don't know the precise answer, but I would suggest that maybe um, systems need to look at um, uh, in the same way that it you cannot um, uh, uh, not employ someone based on their religion or their sex. Maybe something like this can be can be thought of. 
um, to try and uh, prevent uh, employees uh, being able to do not offer you a job because you have blown the whistle in another company. Maybe this is some solution that could be looked at. Whether that will work in these highly politicized cases, of course, is another matter. But potentially for um, some of the, the not government whistleblowers, maybe this is a solution that would work, at least in some cases. Thank you, Sarah. Julian, would you like to contribute yes, to this just discussion? Say that <clears throat> are there one solution to this problem, which is, of course, what my works involve for almost 20 years, uh, is that the whistleblower stays anonymous. Uh, it is impossible to keep track of all the political ramifications um, and influence that is peddled uh, under the surface in an informal manner even if one has formal um, preventions on discrimination against employees for past whistleblowing, which I think is an excellent idea uh, and uh, easy to do and something that I don't think would uh, re uh, generate much opposition. So is uh, evilly achievable by the European Parliament and the Commission. Um, but by staying anonymous, uh, people are able to uh, blow the whistle, uh, not just once, but many, many times. Uh, and continue on in their life and in fact rise up into ever greater positions of uh, access uh, and influence. Uh, so it's important to have these sources from low levels and high levels. But I, I'd also like to, if I may, uh, take a moment to applaud the work of the ILO, the International Labour Organization, uh, who we've um, um, seen uh, in a number of important cases uh, where organizations like the ICC uh, or other UN institutions uh, have seen someone um, revealing information about those organizations and then faced retribution uh, and the ILA, ILO and its um, um, arbitration uh, uh, quasi, uh, in fact really a judicial process uh, has been able to provide redress or at least uh, com at least compensation uh, to those people uh, and create deterrence um, from organizations from doing that. There's another way that one can, although I, the ILO um, uh, jurisdiction, uh, I believe, I'm not certain, does not cover um, the European Commission, uh, but one can build in um, calls to the ILO to arbitrate uh, in these um, massive uh, treaty agreements like the TISA and like the TTIP that have been negotiated uh, and insist uh, that it is part of those treaties uh, for there to be appeals to the ILO in relation to whistleblowing cases. Thank you very much. And the last question I would like 